Hey everyone, I'm Richard, and so a while back I reviewed the ASUS GX800 VH, quite possibly the world's most powerful laptop, and I noted significantly improved performance from GTX 1080 SLI compared to Desktop Titan X. And back then I wondered how the comparison would stack up with standard SLI. Well, ASUS stepped in with four GPUs for me to look at the top end OC Strix models of both the GTX 1070 and the GTX 1080. And when I say top end, and I mean top end. We have ASUS's very best designs here. Long tri-fan cards with impeccable build quality, quiet operation, RGB lighting and a revised port design. Perhaps with VR in mind, these cards come with two HDMI 2.0 ports rather than the usual one. It means you can easily hook up both a VR headset and a UHD TV and that actually shows a bit of foresight here because 4K is a big deal these days and TVs actually offer much more real estate for the money than desktop monitors. Oh, and let's not forget that these cards' superior thermal solution means extremely low temperatures, the lowest I've seen by the way, and some phenomenal overclocking straight out of the box. Pretty insane stuff actually, and what it means is that you get a decent increase in performance over reference models without actually having to do a thing. Now, an extra four, five, six FPS on benchmarks may not seem like a big deal, but in real life applications, it's all about making your lowest frame rates as high as possible. And in that scenario, every little helps. Now, similar to other high-end cards, these ASUS Strix cards actually have different overclocking profiles you can access with a bespoke tool called GPU Tweak 2. There's an OC profile, a gaming profile, and a silent configuration. Now, silent is generally on par or slightly better than reference clocks, but in actual fact, with both of the Strix cards I tested, I didn't actually see much difference in performance, thermals, or acoustics between the gaming mode or the OC mode. Silent is a bit slower, but there's not a vast differential there. My advice would be to stick with the OC profile. In terms of manual overclocking on both the 1070 and the 1080, I could add only 50 megahertz to the core, but RAM could be boosted by 600 megahertz. You get a small boost by doing this, but personally, I'd just leave the core where it is and overclock the RAM only. ASUS have pushed the cards almost to their limits and you don't need to worry about stability on any game. Okay, so the bottom line is this really, and we've said it before in our main reviews. The GTX 1070 is like the consummate card for 1440p gameplay, and with tweaking, it's good for 4K at top end settings in 30 FPS territory. Now the GTX 1080, well, some compromises need to be made, but it will give an agreeable 4K experience in many top tier titles. So let's cut to the chase. Let's talk SLI on both cards. First up, Nvidia has revised SLI significantly for the new Pascal architecture. Only higher end cards can run it, and only two GPUs are officially supported these days. Oh yeah, and you're gonna need one of these, the new SLI bridge. Nvidia says that bandwidth isn't sufficient on lower end ribbon style cable bridges like, well, like this one. But one thing you need to bear in mind is that if you do buy the new bridge, you need to ensure it's the right one for your motherboard. So this one here, it's designed for motherboards where the two GPUs are separated by a single slot. And that leads me on to another SLI pro tip. This style of card well, it kind of expels hot air into the case, as opposed to the reference cards, which tend to propel most of the heat out of the rear. Now, the end result here is that with these cards, GPU 2 is pretty much super cool, while GPU 1 is about 10 degrees hotter, and its airflow is impeded by the second processor. Now, thankfully, we're still way, way below the thermal throttling point in our testing, so the performance metrics are not affected. And in our tests, boost clock was just 25 megahertz lower than the card running on its own. So first up, some observations at 1080p full HD resolution. There are boosts here, but generally speaking, the higher you push the pixel count, the more scalability you get from SLI. Now in terms of the GTX 1070, there's generally a good amount of scaling overall, but the average frame rate metric can be deceptive. We move into genuine bottleneck territory on occasion, and you can see areas where frame rates between single card and SLI setups almost equalize. And yes, as you would imagine, the situation can be even worse on GTX 1080 at the same full HD resolution. And this is kind of one of my bugbears about benchmarking, the average frame rate metric dominates. 
and scalability is measured as a percentage, inferring a kind of uniform improvement across the experience. Well, the reality, the reality is something like this. It's amazing. Perhaps not surprisingly, things improve significantly at 1440p. Graphics tasks become the primary bottleneck and the gap between single card and SLI performance is more consistent. However, overall scalability still isn't awesome. It's still in the kind of 50 to 60% category and the relative improvement to performance overall is actually lower on GTX 1080 than it is on the 1070. It's like there's a limit to overall frame rates, a kind of wall you hit the more power you have. And that's not really great, bearing in mind the costs involved in buying two of these cards. Now, at 4K, things get really interesting. And it's where my focus has been for the most part in this testing. I've been doing a lot of Ultra HD gameplay and the aim here has been to kind of stabilize at a locked 60 frames per second. We know that the CPU overhead isn't really a problem at 60 FPS and we know that the visual return is there. Get a 40 inch screen like the Samsung KU 6400 Set it up as a desktop monitor and you get a relatively vast amount of real estate plus extreme pixel density. Looks fantastic. Alternatively, you still get a highly rich visual experience on a proper full-on flat screen for the living room. Just looks sensational. Right now, the Titan X Pascal is the king of the hill for single chip GPUs. So how do our dual SLI setups compare? Now, Assassin's Creed Unity is the king of SLI scalability, a best case scenario if you like, and here you can see GTX 1070 SLI sailing past Titan X. GTX 1080 SLI takes that a step further. Both SLI setups can be tweaked to give you something akin to a locked 60 FPS, something that just isn't possible on the Titan. Crisis 3 1070 SLI pushes ahead of the Titan while 1080 SLI is a whole 16 frames per second ahead. Far Cry Primal is fascinating. 1070 SLI is 10 FPS ahead of the Titan while 1080 SLI is 25 frames per second faster. And it's a similar story with The Witcher 3 which again shows phenomenal scaling. Now if this all sounds too good to be true, well yes it is in some respects. Let's take a look at the division at 4K. The Titan X lags behind both the 1070 and the 1080 SLI in terms of raw performance, but concentrate on the frame time graph and you'll see severe stuttering issues. While frame pacing problems are mostly a thing of the past these days, some titles still exhibit the issue. And it's an example of how raw benchmarks aren't always indicative of the actual gameplay experience. In short, when we do our gameplay tests, make sure you keep an eye on the frame time graph as well as the frame rate. Frame time is actually far more representative of the feel of the game. Oh yeah, and check this out. Far Cry Primal on 1070 SLI here is actually beating the 1080 in SLI, which in turn is slower than the single card. Now this is ultra weird. I tried driver upgrades, retests, the lot and still got the same results. But the good news is that this is at 1080p resolution by the way, but things work out just fine at 4K. But regardless, it highlights that sometimes SLI just seems to well not work as well as it should. And secondly, this is Gears of War 4 running at 4K 60fps and man, it's absolutely amazing. The problem is that it's one of a number of games that don't have multi-GPU support, meaning that in this case, your second GPU is just sitting there doing nothing while the single chip Titan speeds ahead. Now, generally speaking, when this kind of situation happens, there's enough of a push from the community to get something done about it. But if you're looking to get the most out of your games on day one, you've got to seriously think twice about pursuing a multi-GPU setup. But the bottom line is clear. Two 1070s in SLI beats Titan X Pascal with performance to spare and it costs a whole lot less. At 4K, where SLI really works best, the jump from 1070 to 1080 SLI is only around 10 to 15 frames per second. And this is quite profound when you think about it, bearing in mind the colossal cost differential. But of course, everything could change when Nvidia eventually releases the inevitable GTX 1080 Ti, where we expect to see the lion's share of Titan X performance at a much lower price point. And yeah, what if we SLI that, or indeed the full fat Titan X? I have to admit, I'm sort of curious to see the result, but that will have to wait for another day. Do like and subscribe to support what we do. I really hope you like the video. Thanks for watching.